Good afternoon, everybody. Would help if I unmuted my microphone so you guys could actually hear me. So, I have was, if you guys popped in the uh, firmware stream last night around, I don't know, I think it was like 1 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't know. Got our firmware load on here. Uh, I just want to preface this by saying this printer prints great. Um, out of the box. I got our firmware on here. Um, got all the little upgrades and stuff done to it. So let me let me show you guys um, a, a print off here. This is a Benchy. This is with my first attempt printing this. Let me just rotate my cable here, or rotate this. Uh, rotate 180. There we go. So let me put this on here so you guys can get some light. So this is the first Benchy off of here, and this is running our firmware. It's not running their firmware. Turn the light on here so we can see better. And to be completely honest, the print quality off this, if this would focus, come on. Oh, there we go. My aperture was closed. That would that would help. So the print quality off this printer is pretty dang good. Okay. It's kind of hard to see because it's uh it's white. But Slight bit under extrusion. I think I'm going to bump the steps per millimeter on the E up from the default that Crowley sets of 93 to 95. So, and this is just a quick S3D profile I threw together. Um, but in terms of the the cooling, let me see it works better if I just have this further away. So you guys can see the lines better. Oh, that works. All right. Okay, so print quality, pretty good. Overhangs look good. Just trying to find the depth of field here on this camera where I have it focused. Um, but it's it's smooth. It's smooth print quality. I got some string here. I used the profile from my original CR10 on this. And like I said, for a profile, I just, I just slapped together really quick based off of one I already had from a similar machine. Um, it looks pretty good. So print quality, I'm impressed with. The only gripe I have with this machine is the fact that their marketing team sucks and they expect you guys to just accept the fact that they advertise one thing and you get another. So if you guys saw in the stream here, I had pulled up the product page and this is the current product page. I'll even reload it here. So you guys can see here, I'll do a control shift and we'll reload it. So here's a new one. Now they updated, if you guys looked at the first one, there were no animated GIFs. Okay. None of these pages were animated. So this is showing you here, DIY fun, imported, blah, blah, blah. Um, and now they have it as non-standard equipped. However, the image that I pulled, so here's the original image from their listings, it says one bottom style extruder and then one replaceable direct drive extruder. Nowhere does it say it's optional. This right here, the BL Touch, specifically says is it is not come with the printer. Okay, so I was not expecting the BL Touch. And also because when I selected on the product page up here, there was VR2, V2, and plus BL Touch Kit. So it was very clear that this. BL Touch did not come with the printer because I didn't order the BL Touch kit. Now, they have updated this, but this was updated literally yesterday. So everybody that ordered this before saw this. And here, if we go to their Facebook page, and I'll even refresh this so you guys can say, oh, it's not a, it's a cash page. Nope. All right, let's, let's just scroll down here to where they posted it. Just a couple posts down. Be right about here. Okay, so you can see here again. Switch between near end, far end extrusion. Tighten near end extrusion unit. Nowhere does this say that this is optional. Yet again, still advertising that you can switch between these. And it says, oh God, what did Firefox do? Okay, it even says here, optional here. So again, they're making it very clear that the BL Touch is 
optional. And the Titan, would you guys assume that this just comes with it? Because that's what I did. I, I ordered from this Facebook link, because this popped up in my feed as a Facebook ad. They're running ads on it. So this post right here, we're going back to it. This post popped up in my Facebook feed, and I ordered it from this link here. Okay, I did not go to Creality.com or anything. I went to this link because this is what the advert said. And this is still showing, like I said, that it's there. Now I'm wondering, I actually did not check any AliExpress pages to see. I don't even know if they have it on their AliExpress store. Let's see if the V2 is even listed. It is. Okay. So let's see if these are all updated. So we've got at least, at least th four listings here that I can see. So let's see. Does this one say that it's optional? Oh, here's a new, here's here's another one. We're trying to put near end and far end into one machine. Okay, this is clearly still saying that this is coming with it. Where does this say optional on here? Let's see what it says on the bottom. I'm willing to bet they haven't updated this. Oh no, they haven't. Like switch between near end far end extrusion unit again. BL touch optional. We get it. It's optional. Here, near end far end feeding in. No optional, like it does not specify that it's optional. Like, <laughs> this is funny. It's it's just not even showing on this one. They didn't even try. I'm assuming they photoshopped it on there. So the thing is, like, there's all these different variations of this same machine being sold. These are still showing that they come with it. Like... They haven't gone through and updated all their other listings. The Ender Official Store is a Creality Store. I think they have a, like two or three, um, but these are all still showing. I know Two Auto is a reseller, so this is not actually Creality, but Two Auto is a reseller. Do they have anywhere? Just Two Auto? Yeah, here we go. Here, here's another one. They uh, Two Auto obviously made their own here. Like. There's nowhere to purchase this upgrade. There's no mention uh, uh, until now that they updated the page literally last night after I told them to the changed listing here. Non-standard equipped. Why even bother mention it? I can put a Titan on literally any printer. It doesn't make your printer special because you literally say that it can take a Titan. Any printer can take a Titan extruder. That's the point of the Titan, is it's a universal product. You can print a mount, you can buy a mount, whatever. It comes, it can go on any printer. It's a part. You know, it's just like a hot end. Um, so I've got my messages here from Creality. Where is it? Um, they just stopped replying at some point last night. Where is it? So I said, I said here, hi, I received my Titan, my Sierra 10 V2. The Titan sure is missing. This is during the stream, by the way. Uh, even though the product page shows it's coming with. Hi, we're so sorry that the description is a little controversial and the package not include the Titan Extruder. If you want it, you can buy one. That's not how this works. You guys advertised it and are still advertising it in multiple places that it comes with this printer. The product page that I purchased it from said that it came with this and I could switch between the two products. Now, at $500, this is a decent printer. Don't get me wrong that I'm just taking a giant dump on the CR10 V2. I'm very impressed with the improvements they've made. I'm very impressed with the print quality. I like what they did with the machine. The thing is, if you advertise something as including something, it should come with what you're advertising. I don't care if you don't speak English well, if your marketing team doesn't speak English well, there's no excuse for it. Ask someone in the community to make you an advert that makes sense. Like, I'm sure there's tons of people that would sit down and whip you up a, a little product blurb that actually makes sense to English people. Like, instead of trying to use Google Translate and coming up with these weird descriptions that don't really make any sense. But the thing is, even if you did use Google Translate, it still would have had something of the fact that it was not included or not standard or not equipped by default or it's an upgrade at all. You guys got it right on the BL Touch. Why couldn't you get it right on the Titan Extruder? Like, it, so here's what I, here's what my solution is. I like the printer. Don't get me wrong. 500 bucks for this. It's not like, oh my God, fire sale, buy it. 
500 bucks for this machine is a good deal. However, what, it, what my whole point of contention is, is that it said it came with this and I could switch between the two options, the Bowden and the Titan. I thought that's a cool idea. I'm assuming the, the Titan includes the second stepper, the extruder itself, the part to mount it to the hot end, and then an extension cable for the e-motor. But I don't know because it didn't come with the printer and you can't even purchase it separate or can't even purchase it separately on their website. If you guys don't even have it ready, why even advertise it? There goes a the board. Ah, it was just a Troxy board. No, no, nothing of value was lost. So then, then here they had a sale. I did get another one at $300. So I got another one at their promotional price with a BL Touch for $300. So my, my solution was, okay, like I've had to eat stuff because we've had website descriptions that I forgot to update. I genuinely forgot to update stuff and I made it right with the customer to, hey, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Do you want me to refund you? Like, do you want a partial refund? Do you want me to send you a return label? You return the product. I'm really sorry. I screwed up. I'll fix it and I'll make this right. They're not doing anything. There's just, uh, you can probably ignore this. I was just asking for the source code. They said they're going to, um, they're going to do it. Um, and they're going to apply to their superior, um, whatever that means. I think the last, was this the last one? Yeah, this is the last one here. So they were replying. I was waiting. I told them we'd be up for another two or three hours. I asked any update on this or should I go through PayPal? So I opened up a PayPal case with a $100 partial refund. So what I'm going to do is if they don't issue the $100 partial refund for it, because that's about what that upgrade is probably going to cost based on the cost of the stepper, the cables, a genuine E3D Titan extruder, because that's what they're showing in the pictures. It's got the E3D uh, lid on it. It's got the E3D genuine sticker on it. So I'm going to assume that an upgrade has been around $100. So if that's what I'm missing, then refund me hundred bucks. I'll keep the printer. I'll end up having two of them. If not, I'm going to, I'm going to send this entire machine back for a full refund because it's not as a scribe period. So, Either they're going to be paying to ship this entire printer back to them because it's not as described, or they can just refund me a hundred bucks and I'm out of their hair. Like it's a matter of you didn't like, I don't care that you and your marketing team or whoever you want to blame it on screwed up. The, the reality is your business, you have to make it right with the customer because you screwed up. This isn't me being a jag off customer that's being difficult for no reason. This is me holding you accountable for the fact that you advertise something as a certain specification and it does not meet that specification or it even include the parts to meet said specification. So that's where we're at with this. I think the printer is a good printer for $500. It's a good deal for what you get. Just understand that you do not get the Titan upgrade, even though there are still listings out there that say that it comes with it and it's just a thing you can switch on the fly. Like, oh, I'm going to print direct today. Oh, I'm going to print Bowden today. That's not at all how it is. It's a Bowden printer. That's it. That's all you get. Um, and if you guys did order this machine before yesterday, or ordered it from one of the AliExpress page and you don't get it, I want you to do the same thing I'm doing. Go after them, hold their feet to the fire, and hold them accountable for their poor and false advertising. I am going to assume it's not malicious. I'm not assuming that they're just trying to screw everybody. I think it was a situation where they just have people that don't speak English and don't really know what they're doing and they were given a vague set of instructions on what to make and that's what came out. I would be more inclined to believe that it was an accident and maybe not them changing their mind on what's included um, if the BL Touch was also listed as just there but didn't actually come with it. But that's not the case. They were clear that the BL Touch didn't come with it. They had a separate drop down for the BL Touch bundled model. So if you guys can see where I'm coming from with that, that's the whole point of contention with this is that you guys advertised it as this printer could switch between the two. That's, that's it. It's not the case. You fixed it on one product page. You've got at least four other AliExpress listings, uh, three of which are your AliExpress stores. One is a reseller. So the reseller that's on them to, to adjust their product listings. 
Um, but again, too, the reseller could even go, well, Creality gave us these specifications. This is what we put on it. You know, especially since Two Auto is a Chinese reseller, they don't know any better. They're just reselling stuff. Like, they, I doubt that they've ever even used the printer. Um, but this is, this, is the, this is where we're at with this. As, as a printer, if this didn't happen, if there was no issues with this, um, and there wasn't this whole false advertising issue, I would have nothing but positive things to say about this printer, especially for the price point. For $500, the meanwhile power supply, the new control board, the all-metal extruder, the support structure, uh, the 24-volt system, the nice 12864 LCD. You guys know I love these LCDs because you can tune them or tune your printer with them way easier than a touchscreen. Um, they did a lot of improvements to this, and I do think it's worth $500. However, it's a point of principle at this matter that they advertise it as coming with something that it did not, and that's not my fault as a customer that your marketing team is a bunch of idiots. That's, that's what it comes down to. Like, you guys, I wonder how many people are actually messaging them, how many people are just going, oh, okay, I guess you're right, well, the product page now says that, but... No, that's not how this is. Like, if I, if I sold you, let's say I sold you, uh, I don't know. Let's let's think of a hype. Let's say I, let's say I sold you, uh, like we have we, here. This is simple. Let's say you buy a hot end from us, and I have it listed that there's all these nozzles that you know look like they come with it. Like, yeah, like this works with these all these nozzles, but I don't list and and I make it look like in the product photos that these nozzles are with it but I don't specify that they're optional. Guess what? Either I'm eating a return on that, or I'm going to go, oh yeah, I screwed up. That product description is terrible. It's not accurate. And there's no option to even select those nozzles. I'm sorry, would you like a partial refund, or would you like me to send you a return label to send the product back? Like, that's how this works. Like, you screw up, you got to take some on the chin, and you got to just eat it. Like, it's part of running a business. You screw up, you own it. Like, my whole thing on how we run this company is if we screw up, we are eating it, okay? That simple. If we legitimately screw something up, we are going to own it and we're going to make it right because we screwed up. You know, this isn't a case of a customer just being irate for no reason just because they had a bad day and they want someone to take it out on. This is holding the company accountable for what they're advertising. I don't care if you're from China, the U.S., Germany, Japan... Malaysia, I don't care where you're from. If you advertise it as coming with something, it should come with it. If it doesn't, then offer the customer to return it if they're not happy with that. Or do the logical thing, oh, what's that upgrade cost? Oh, 100 bucks? Well, then here, let me give you a $100 refund, and then we'll call it a wash, because that's what you're missing out on. So that's where I'm at. I'm waiting to hear back if they actually do the partial refund. If they do the partial refund, I'll keep it and I'll end up having two CR10 V2s. If they don't do the partial refund, I'm going to put this back in the box. I'm going to tape it up and I'm going to send it back to Creality and then I'll have another V2 once my one I got for $300 came in. So if, if that's the case, I'll end up saving quite a bit of money either way. But I don't mind having two of these machines because these will go out in the print farm and they'll print, you know, product parts for us. So I don't think it's right that they're doing that. I'm willing to bet that a lot of people are just going to be like, you know, just okay, not even question what they're doing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let me see chat. Totally forgot about chat. I'm just sitting here rolling on my rant here. Um, let's see. Where are the print lines? There's not many lines on it. Like I said, this printer prints good. Especially, especially with our firmware on it now. Like, I've got our firmware on it. It feels... Nice and familiar. Um, it prints really well. This printer prints really well. Um, is this horse not dead enough yet? No, the horse is, is. The horse will be dead when either I get a refund for the parts that are missing, or I send this thing back to them. Um, hold that thought. The dog is banging on the bells, and I don't want her to use the bathroom in the house. Um, Maker Matrix, did you get the email from Creality saying they don't have the BL Touch they owe us? Really? Okay, well, I'll pull up my email. I'm going through the rest of the comments. 
So if it's not even an option to buy, why is it putting the adverts? I have no idea. Yes, Firefox. I use Firefox for my TH3D stuff, and I use Chrome for my personal stuff just to keep them all separated. Uh, Maker Matrix is not optional. You can't get it all right now. That's correct. Nor do they have the BL Touch in stock, which you can select. They did not refund us the money. Um... Uncle Van, just just leave if you don't like it. No one's forcing you to watch the video. This this information, if you're pissed off because I'm trying to tell people that Creality screwed up here and misled customers, then just just don't watch the channel. Like, are you that stupid? Seriously. Like, you're not like this is the fact that they advertise something incorrectly and you're getting pissed off. Like, are you are you working for Creality? Like, I don't get it. I'm sorry that you're triggered because I'm telling it like it is. So. Let's see here. I, I even said at the start of the video that this printer works well and for $500, it's a good printer. The whole point, like I said, if it wasn't clear already, is that it was advertised as coming with something and it didn't. That's it. Don't read into it any further. Like, that's, I don't understand why you're getting all butthurt. Um, let's see. I argue they didn't get it right on the BL Touch either. They don't have it. Well, it, they should have it on back order, but meh. I honestly don't care if I get the BL Touch or not. It's, I'm probably going to resell the BL Touch as soon as it comes in. Uh, does it have thermal runaway protection on the bed and the hot end? Yeah, the price is back at $4.99. At $4.99, this is a decent printer. Like I said, I'm not trying to crap all over this printer. Not at all. I like the CR10 V2, period. It is a nice printer. It prints nice. Like I was showing off earlier, this was the first Benchy off of it with a non-tuned profile. I just grabbed a CR10 profile I had for my CR10 V1 I have out in the print farm, and this came out gorgeous. The cooling's good. The new cooling duct they have is good. I'm not even going to change this hot end fan, to be completely honest with you guys. I might throw a, I might throw a Titan on here, like one of our tough extruder versions, to replace this metal one, because I'm just not a fan, but it works. It works great. It's got proper tension. It's solid. I might not even do anything to it, to be honest. I'll throw my, my ABL sensor on here and call it a day. The bed is warped, as I expected. There's about a 0.1 millimeter drop from the corners of the center. So the center of my bed bows down a little bit. It's a cheap Chinese printer. It sucks. Yes, whatever. I'm putting bed leveling on it to deal with it. Um, I mean, I could be a I could be a total you know jerk about that, but whatever. I understand this is the the price of admission for these machines. Um, so again, for five hundred dollars, the improvements and the the features on this printer are worth the money. My whole issue is that. Right now, they're currently advertising it on AliExpress, on Facebook, that it comes with stuff it does not actually come with that is a significant cost. We're not talking about a $10 roll of filament or a bed sticker or something that's cheap. We're talking about almost a $100 upgrade, if not more, because the Titans are not cheap. If it's an actual E3D Titan, like they're advertising, so we'll see if that's even a genuine Titan, then that is fair that they should give a partial refund in that amount for the people that didn't get it that they falsely advertised to. Period. End of discussion. It's that simple. If you don't understand it after presenting all the facts here and all the evidence, then I can't help you. I'm just trying to help the community out by making an informed purchase decision and knowing what they're getting themselves into because we're dealing with Chinese printers. This is what happens. They bait and switch. They put the wrong information out. And my job, because I actually give a crap about the community, is to tell you guys when companies are doing stuff like this. Like, and I expect if me or my company does something, you guys do the same to us. And I guarantee if we screwed something up, we will do right by our customers, period. I, I want you all to hold us to that standard. I'm 100% serious here. If we screw up, hold our feet to the fire and we will make it right. You probably actually, you won't even have to hold our feet to the fire. Just say, hey, this isn't correct. And we'll take care of it. Not back and forth, back and forth. Let me apply to my superior. Like, if we screw up, we make it right. That's simple. 
That's what I'm asking of Creality. You guys screwed up, make it right. Make it right by either issuing a partial refund or I'm going to ship this entire printer back. I haven't thrown out the box and all the packaging. It's all right here. Thank you, Iski. So, it's that simple. They screwed up. They got to take one on the chin and they got to make it right. It's part of doing business. It's part of doing business when you screw up and, you know, don't make sure your documentation is correct. I've done it before. I've had certain products like I think some fans where our part number was discontinued. The new ones we got were slightly different specifications, so they were a little louder. People noticed that. I forgot to update the description. I ended up just refunding the fans. It wasn't worth me to ship them back. Like, that's what I did for our customers. Now, we're talking obviously a small part here. Whatever, I'm out like, you know, 60 or 70 bucks after refunding a couple orders. But guess what? I didn't tell my customers, oh, well, sorry. Yeah, I didn't put the correct listing on my product. So, yeah, tough crap. You know, go pound sand. Like, <laughs> can I do a say? <laughs> I jokingly did a dab in one video and it's just, it looks so cringe. I'm, I'm too old, apparently, to do a proper dab. Um, so... Yeah, if you guys if you guys are pissed off because I'm honest, then don't watch the channel. No one's forcing you to watch this. You click the link, you're here watching this. And if you have followed this channel at all, you will know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I don't sugarcoat anything. I try to be objective in the reviews and feedback I give. And like I said, I love this printer so far. I love the improvements, the airflow, the print quality, the, the TMC drivers, the Meanwhile power supply, the metal extruder, the new hot end design. It's all great. It's a good improvement. Just advertise it correctly. $500 for this isn't a bad price at all for what you get on this machine. Like, it's not. Greg, it's not. Let me put it this way. A CR10S, okay? Because CR10S has dual lead screws, okay? Has 2560 board. This this is comparable to the CR10S. They should have actually called this CR10S V2. But anyways, there are CR10 and CR10Ss. You'll find them anywhere between like 300 to 450. So let's let's say let's pick 400 for the average price for a CR10S. Okay, because that's a comparable machine. It's dual lead screw, whatever. 100 bucks more gets you a meanwhile power supply, dynamic drivers, metal extruder. Um, and the support braces that right there is worth a hundred bucks period That simple you guys need to get out of this mindset that everything needs to be a three hundred dollar printer I was talking about this in the last stream the reason why we keep getting printers that are crap and Have issues and some serious issues is because you guys as consumers are being cheap and don't want to put your money where your mouth is You say you want a good product But then when time time comes to take out your credit card and buy it you're complaining about the price guess what quality costs money This is a quality printer. I I wholeheartedly believe that the changes they made to this and the parts they put on this are quality So guess what you want quality it costs more you want to keep buying $300 printers? Go ahead and keep buying $300 printers. For $500, bucks, they did a lot right on this, and they did a lot of improvements, period. So this is not a $300 printer. This is a $500 printer. I like the improvements. They grounded the bed. They paid attention and grounded the bed. That's a good improvement. Like, that's a little safety improvement, especially if you go and put an AC bed on here. It's already got a ground wire run to it. Did they have to do that? No. TiVo does not have better quality. TiVo is about the same as Creality. I would not say they're over or under. I'd say TiVo and Creality, they're about the same in terms of quality across most of their printers. So, but the point is, it's $500 is not steep. It may seem in your head that it's steep because you're used to the three, four hundred dollar CR tens. But like I said, guess what, guys? You want something better quality? It costs more money. That's how this works. Stuff that's better quality costs more money. Now, the only QC issue I would say I had with this was the stock SD card. It stopped reading for some reason. Annoying, yes. Deal breaker, whatever. I don't even use SD cards. Just pop about. I don't even use the stock SD card. So, um, I had Ender 5 Plus. I have one on the way. It says it shipped. So, I can't give an opinion on the Ender 5 Plus since I don't have one. Um, I can tell you right now, I'll like this better than the Ender 5 Plus because it doesn't have that damn touchscreen. 
if it has a touch screen, I'm going to have a really hard time buying it unless it's strictly for us doing development on. I'm not going to buy a printer for fun or excitement that has a touch screen because I don't like the touch screens. You can't do as much with them. They're harder to work with. They don't have as many features and the firmwares are closed source on them. That's why I don't like the touch screen. You can't easily do baby stepping. Like I updated this. I got baby stepping on here. I don't even have a probe on here. I got baby stepping to adjust my first layer with manual leveling. Like, you know, <laughs> it's nice, but like, I don't want to hear any of this. Like $500 is too much. It's not, it's not too much. Um, it's still, I don't know what the amp rating on the connectors are, but it's still got the avionics connector. Got a five pin, but I don't think it's going to be a problem because it's 24 volts. So I've heard the duet. The duet touchscreen is probably decent because it's all part of that ecosystem. That's why I haven't really heard anybody complaining about the duet touchscreens. So, yeah. Um, on our GitHub last night, if you look at the last video, um, we have the firmware on here. I got the TH3D firmware on the printer right now, actually. Do I still have it plugged in? I do. Oh, boy. This is awkward. There you go. TH3D, U1R2 16 ready. Prepare auto home. I <laughs> hit the mount for my, my camera. But we're, uh, we're homing. That Benchy was printed with our firmware on here. I don't know where you're getting the amp ratings from on these connectors, but I haven't seen any major issues with those connectors. I know you said you did, but I haven't seen people posting about them. Typically, if there's a widespread issue, you'll see a lot of people posting about them. I haven't had any issues with them. And the fact that this is run on 24 volt, that you're pulling a lot less amperage through them. So there's no physical modifications to this printer. So I'll, I can, I, I have, uh, um, yeah, there's no modifications. So that's it. So if they don't, if they don't accept the partial refund, I'll send this back and get a full refund and then I'll just wait for the other one we ordered on the stream to come in. Um, but yeah, uh, easy ABL will be supported on this. Um, just need a mount like, like, uh, Roush says, or Rush. How do I even say your, your handle dude there, bud? Um, but the only thing that's modified on this is the firmware and I can flash that back to their stock one. And, uh, that can open up a whole nother can of worms. So they still haven't released any of the source code. I'm assuming they will. They've been good about it. So I'm not gonna get on them about that, but, um, I'm not going to go doing any mods or anything to this until I find out what's going on. I mean, I guess I could mod this one. Uh, but like I said, the only thing I'm going to do on this is add a bed leveling sensor. The stock cotton ends decent. The stock extruder is decent. It's got a filament sensor. What more do I want? Um, asking a question about the sidewinder and suffer a Z wobble. Um, you're, that's a mechanical issue. Check your mechanicals that run your Z. See if your lead screws are straight. See if your wheels are properly aligned. Um, yeah. So, uh, 3DP ISO, no offense, but the, the, the rating on that is not a huge deal because you're not pulsing your, you're pulsing your bed. You're only heating it up for a short period of time at full current. And then you're, you're pulsing on and off. So it's not, it's not going to have a full sustained load. Yes. They probably could use higher amp rating terminals. Um, but again, remember when I was talking about, you guys want cheap printers, cost cuts got to come from somewhere. Um, but this is 24 volts. So you're going to have less amps going through it versus a 12 volt machine. So I haven't measured the ohms on this. Um, I actually could Let me see if I figure out the, let me see if I figure out how many ohms this is. I can tell you roughly how many amps this pulls just by measuring the ohms on the bed. Let 
But what I'm trying to say is, I know you keep bringing that pin connector up, but I haven't seen massive failures on it. So it's kind of like... Overblown. Uh, that's the thermistor. I'm assuming these other two are to bed. So it's getting 100k on there. Um, F, F, is that, what the hell? I might actually have to open this up. They put them on the outer two pins, they might have. Hang on. Yep, that's not it. I don't want to have to open this up. I'm going to assume it's one of these pairings here. So it makes sense that it'd be two pins next to it. So I got 100k off of those two pins. Two mega ohms. That's not it. The hell is my? Where's my bed connection? I'll have to just like open this up and see. Oh, here we go. Okay, my meter's just being weird. I'm reading like 2.6, 2.7 ohms on here. So that's our bed resistance. So let's say 2.7 at 24 volts. I, I don't, I know the ohms law formula. I just don't do it in my head because I'm lazy. 24 volts, 2.7 ohms resistance. That's 8.8 .8 amps, 213 watts. So. I think that connector will be fine. It's pretty it's pretty beefy. Like it it feels solid. Um they did not put the source code out. Um Iski, good on you May for putting this out there. People should hold them accountable for false advertising as well as releasing printers that haven't been fully tested and shouldn't have been released. I wouldn't call this not fully tested. I'm I think it was just a simple fact that their marketing department screwed up or like I don't know. Is ignorant. Um, the printer worked out of the box. Plugged it in. It's got thermal protection on the hot end of the bed. Like I said, I think it's a good buy at five hundred dollars. Anything, um, anything lower than that is is a good deal. Four hundred, three hundred, four fifty. Um, you know, I I think it's a good machine. I got really good print quality out of it. This is the the first benchy I did. Everything's smooth. The cooling is good. Their stock cooling works well. They got the 5015 fan on there. It's not that great of a brand. It's like some unbranded Chinese fan, but you know what? It's a 5015 fan. It's better than the 4010s they use. And the print quality is good. The extruder works. The filament sensor works. The trinamic drivers are quiet. I'm I'm happy. It's a Creality 2.5.2 motherboard. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a new board. It's got a full-size SD slot and micro USB. So the 114, the 115, the 2.1, 2.2, and the even our easy board will not fit in this because uh, it's a different footprint. And I don't think we're, we're going to make a board replacement for this unless this machine really takes off and Creality starts using this board in a lot more machines because we'd have to change the entire board layout to accommodate the new mounting holes and the SD slot and the micro USB. So... Uh, those of you that would be asking if we're going to come out with an easy board for this, the answer is no right now in the near and immediate future. Um, so, and 32 bits, great. Um, but right now, until there's some really killer features in Marlin, um, it's only a slight improvement in print quality. Like if you have your 8-bit machine properly tuned, you can get great print quality out of an 8-bit processor. You know, a 32-bit is uh, a lot of bragging rights right now. They are nice, they do run a little smoother, but at the end of the day, uh, if you're printing at normal print speeds, like 40 to 60 millimeters a second, your 8-bit board's gonna do good work. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could print a case to fit it. It has standard connectors. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it's not gonna fit, <laughs> if that makes sense. 
Maybe we can make a retrofit kit or something. But I'm sure if you guys are creative enough, you could you could set it up like a CR10 and make a little adapter if you really wanted the the easy board in there. But this is a nice board. I'm I like I'm you guys know me. I'm honest. I don't I'm not going to take a dump over a product just cuz like, you know, oh man, this is going to cut into my easy board sales. Oh no. Cuz they got a good board in here. No. I tell it like it is. <laughs> like <laughs> It's 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 that simple. I don't I don't care if someone else makes a better product or a good product. Like if it's good, it's good. I don't I don't care. Like I enjoy playing with these machines. It's that simple. If I didn't, I wouldn't be running this company. <laughs> so that's it. Um let's see here. Next one, out of curiosity, can you tell us which printer you consider high quality as a whole? Um that's hard to answer. What what price bracket are you talking? Because, I mean, we're talking if we're talking like sub 300, Ender 3 is a decent buy. Uh, GTEC A10s are okay. Um, I'm kind of torn on them because I don't like their hot end design as nice as the Creality's. The Creality's do work well. Um, but I have had some issues with jamming in the with the, the GTEC printers in our print farm, especially the dual extrusion ones. Um, but, like, we're talking like $300 range or less, Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro specifically, so you get the mean well. Um, up to the 500 I think this might take my my favorite place for in the $500 printer price bracket, um, to be completely honest. Higher than that, uh, not, I don't really have opinion on stuff that's higher than that. The X1 we have here, and I hate... The bed leveling knobs. That's going to be the next printer I'm tearing into to get bed leveling on because I can barely get my hands under there to level that bed. Um, I'm looking to buy a CR10S, but just saw this. Should I buy the V2 or the CR10S? Get the V2. Just understand that you're not getting that Titan. Um, that's the whole issue I have with this is the advertising being incorrect. As far as a printer, so far this has been great. I was playing with it last night. Got my... First Benji off of it with our firmware and Simplify 3D profile that I had for another CR10, and it works. It's it's nice. I like it. Um, can you say more about the prospects of a drop into extrusion on this new V2 board? I'm not sure what you mean. I, I know I mentioned because I saw the board. I do have a contact at Creality where I can see if they can get me these boards made with the fifth driver installed just like we did with the 2.1 2.2 boards so yeah they did the same thing with this one as they did with the the v2.0 2.1 2.2 etc they it's a five driver board but they didn't populate the fifth driver and i understand why especially on this one those tmc's at cost are about four four dollars a piece roughly depending on the quantity you buy in so leaving that driver off saves them four dollars a printer you know, yeah, it would not be an upgrade. It'd be a new whole new board, unless you can do surface mount soldering. You're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna upgrade that chip. It doesn't work like that. There's no real header to pull onto that to even put a breakout on if you wanted to. So it's just like the other boards that are out there. So that's about it. The printer itself is good. I like it. Um. As for the S5, the S5 is one of those machines where you're going to put a lot of money into it to get it running well, but once you do, it will run nice. Um, you know, overheater, bed leveling is a must on that machine because that bed's so dang big. Um, you know, but they're decent machines. I know there's a CR10S Max, which I've heard some decent stuff about. I know Michael from Teaching Tech just did a video on that, and he had some issues with it and said he could not, um, could not rely on it. Uh, or could not recommend it because of all the issues it had. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the, the I kind of got a chuckle. He had a failed print and his BL touch got destroyed. The pin got ripped out from a failed print. That's one of the reasons I don't like the BL touches is mainly from an end user perspective. Um, failed prints can destroy that probe and then you're out, you know, $35, $40 at least for a new probe. Um, ours don't have that issue. It's really hard to kill ours. Um... Let's see here. Just make sure you use one Lewis, one Rossman of Flux. 
Yeah, he likes his flux. I think he's got a 55-gallon drum of flux in the back of his shop there. They just kind of scoop out a cup every morning for each of their desks. Uh, what can we expect from TH3D for the rest of 2019? Um, I got a lot of stuff in the works, but guess what? I'm not teasing that much stuff anymore because what happens is when we tease stuff, um, other companies copy it before we even have a chance to get it to market. So we're being tight-lipped about anything coming out in the future. When it's ready to launch, that's when we're going to announce stuff. So, um, like, we teased little stuff like the LCD conversion kit for the CR-10S Pro. Um, I talked about that anyways, but anything new... We're not releasing any details on until we're ready to sell the product because we made the mistake of teasing the easy board and then Creality came out with their like hack job of a of a board and then Feist Tech jumped on and Big Tree Tech jumped on so you know it's it screws with us um, in terms of our market you know we come up with a new idea we tease it and all the other companies go oh that's a great idea and then they rip rip it off so. Yeah, you'll just have to wait and see. You can subscribe to our newsletter. Um, we do post out in our newsletter, our Facebook group. Um, those are the two places that get the first information. Um, we are going to Earth, if you guys are coming. Um, Sam will be with, coming with us to Earth. She will be there. Or Samantha. She likes to be called Samantha, not Sam. Just, just in case anybody talks to her. She prefers Samantha. Samantha is her preferred pronoun. Um, is it better a 40-20 or 50-15 radio for print cooling? Um, I like the 50-15s better. They do move about the same air. Um, but uh, the 50-15s, you're going to find, they're more popular. You're going to find more mounts for them versus the 40-20s. The 40-20s kind of a, uh, like a second choice. I've never used the 4020s on a printer. I have used them on like some electronic equipment, networking equipment. So Yeah, exactly, Michael. Mike, I said be be like Prusa, keep your cards close to your vest for new products. That's exactly what we're doing. Um and I'm sure he did it because he found out what we did. If you if you make any sort of mention, um you do that. It's like it's like when we came out with our Easy ABL Pro, uh there was a video that was up briefly where one of my guys blabbed about some specifics on the sensors and then a competitor went and did some legwork and found our supplier. Um, luckily he wasn't able to get them to sell them the exact same sensors we use. Um, but you know, it's stuff like that. So we're going to, we, we are going to be more tight lipped about stuff because we've been burned too many times. So as much as I'd like to be super transparent about everything, the reality is there are people that are opportunistic and want to profit from your hard work. So, you know, that's guess that's business. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, you're talking about a forty twenty radial fan. Oh, I thought you meant the forty twenty or fifty fifteen blower because there are forty twenty uh, blower fans, like the the little blower style versus uh. Uh, what is the name of your standard fans? The rectangle ones that, or the square ones everybody uses. I can't remember. There's a, there's a axial, axial. There you go. Axial fans. Axial fans are the ones that are square. Um, blower fans are the ones that look like blowers. Or radial is the technical term, I guess. I like the 5015 radials for, for layers, layer fans. So I think that's it. This wraps it up. TLDR. Printer's good. 500 bucks is a good price for it, for what you get. Um, they just advertised that it came with stuff that it didn't. It's that simple. So either this is going to go back for a full refund, and then I'll keep the uh, second one we ordered uh, when we were on the stream that I got for 300 bucks, um, or I'll accept the partial refund, and then they're not paying to ship a printer back to wherever. So anyways, I will, uh, I will talk to everybody later. I hope you guys have a good weekend. I got some stuff to clean up here. Um, yeah, and then, uh, get the probe mount design for this. So, yeah, uh, I I'm not sure, ah, there we go, the light's turned off. I knew that was coming soon. Because <laughs> I'm not moving around in here in my PIR sensor, so. Anyways, guys, um, I will, I will talk to you all later. Thanks for stopping by, and, as always...
happy printing.